Hi everyone and welcome to another one. Welcome to program code 101, the place where we learn the art and skills required to develop code. I'm your instructor, Mr. Decoder. In our previous video, we looked at the concept of program construct with emphasis on sequence construct as well as generating solutions using sequence construct. If you miss the details of that video, you can select the link above. In today's video, we'll be looking at the concept of selection construct and also generating pseudocodes using selection construct. Selection construct is used to outline the actions or processes being performed that depends on a condition. Statements or instructions may or may not be carried out based on evaluation of the condition. Selection constructs may also be referred to as conditional constructs or if statements. What is a condition? A condition in programming refers to a statement which evaluates an action or item within the program. The evaluated action or item will equate to either a true or false. Relational operators. The condition in the if statement is based on the comparison of two items and is usually expressed with one of the following relational operators. In our table, we identify various relational operators and their uses. Please note that in computing, these are the relational operators that we use to carry out our actions, representing selection constructs. Selection constructs can be represented or constructed using three ways, if-then statement, if-then-else statement, and if-then-else-if statement. The first layout we're going to be looking at is the if-then statement. Now this is used when there is only one option or set of instructions related to the condition being evaluated. Here we have our layout and the layout shows a number of keywords being used. The if keyword indicates the start of the selection structure. The condition indicates the condition from which selection may or may not be made. The statement here will only be executed if the evaluated condition is true. And the end if keyword indicates the end or the termination point of the selection statement. Here we have program instructions that ask us to construct an if statement that awards 15% if the total price of an item is greater than 500. It also asks us to display the discounted price of the item. Here we have the example that represents the solution to this program instruction. Here we have the keyword if followed by the condition that is showed in bracket. We have a variable called total that is used to hold the total price and we are evaluating if this variable is greater than 500. If this condition is true, then the statements that follow will be carried out. So the discount will be calculated by multiplying total by 15% after which the discounted amount will be displayed through the output statement. Each if statement is ended or terminated with the use of the keyword end if. The if then else statement. The if then else statement is used when there are two options related to the condition being evaluated, of which only one will be selected. Here we have the layout of the if then else statement. If keyword is used to indicate the start of the selection structure, condition from which the selection will be made, statement to be executed if the condition is true, statement to be executed if the condition is false, and the end if which indicates the end or termination point of the selection. Please note that the statements that are given here will only be executed based on the condition being evaluated. That is, if the condition is true, only the statements that indicate condition is true will be shown. And if the condition is false, only the statements that refer condition is false will be shown. Here we have an example which shows the outline of the if then else statement. Program instructions read, we are asked to construct an if statement that awards 15% discount, total price of an item is greater than 500, otherwise we are asked to award a 10% discount. It's also asking us to display the discounted price. Note what we use to identify from the program instruction that an if then else statement is used is the keyword otherwise. So the keyword otherwise indicates that there is a second option available based on the condition being evaluated. Here we have our second example. We have the keyword if followed by the condition total greater than 500. Based on this evaluated condition, only one of the two options will be carried out. 
if the condition is true then we will find 15 percent of the total price if the condition is false we'll find 10 percent of the total price here we have the end if keyword indicating the end of our if statement followed by a print statement shows the description discount is followed by the variable that stores the discounted amount layout of the if then else if statement the if then else if statement is used when there are more than two options related to a condition or group of conditions here we have the layout of the if then else if statement and it follows the same sequence of the layouts that we have been looking at so far we have the keyword if followed by the condition then the statements that follow Note that for the if then else if statement, the first condition that is being evaluated, if that condition is true, the statements that follow the then keyword will be executed. All other statements will be ignored. If the first condition is false, then the second if would be evaluated. If that second if condition is, is true, then the statements that follow the then will be executed. If both first and second conditions are false, then the statements that follow the inner else will be displayed followed by the if statement being terminated through the relevant end ifs. Note that the number of if keywords that are present we need the corresponding end ifs to terminate those ifs. So here in this layout we have two if keywords and that means that we need two corresponding end ifs to terminate the two ifs that we have. Here we have program instructions that ask us to construct an if statement that uses the weather to help select different accessories. It says if the weather is raining, we are to display the words carry umbrella. If the weather is sunny, we are to display the text take a hat. Otherwise, we are to display the text take a sweater. So here we can identify a number of options available based on the condition that we are evaluating. Example 3, if then else if statement. Now in this example, we're showing the solution to the program instruction. We have the keyword if followed by the condition that is in bracket. Condition states whether condition equal raining. Note that the term raining is in double quotations. All text that is being evaluated needs to be enclosed within double quotations. So whether equal raining, if that condition is true, we're going to see the text being displayed carry umbrella. If this first condition is false, it's gonna to move to the second condition, which is after the else. If weather equals sunny, then we'll see the text being displayed, take a hat. If both first and second conditions are false, it will then go to the statement after the inner else, which shows that we're to take a sweater. After the statement, we have two corresponding end ifs that are used to terminate our ifs. Here, we're going to be looking at an example shows a full problem statement and how we would interpret this problem statement to generate a solution using selection constructs. First, the problem statement. Problem statement here asks us to write a structured pseudocode that accepts two unequal numbers from the user. The algorithm should find the larger of the two numbers and display the larger number using a suitable label. Here we have the problem statement being shown at the top, as well as the three key areas in which we are required to break down our program. From the program instructions, we identified two entries required for input, which are the two unequal numbers. For the process section, we identified that we're supposed to find the larger of the two number. And for our output, we are to display the larger number based on what was entered. There are two ways that this problem can be solved. Here, we're looking at the first solution. We know from our pseudocode journey that the first thing that we have is the keyword start, followed by the declaration phase. In the declaration phase, we need three variables for this solution. From one, from two, and the variable larger. These are all declared as data type integer. In the initialization phase, we are adding the starting value zero to all of these variables based on the data type integer. After the initialization phase, we need to prompt the user to enter the two unequal values. So here we have our keyword print, followed by the instruction enter two unequal values, followed by the keyword read and the two variables which are used to hold the items entered. The next stage is to carry out our evaluation and this is done through our if statement. So here we are evaluating whether the first number is greater than the second number. If this is true, 
then num1 is the larger of the two numbers therefore num1 is stored in the variable larger if this is false that means that num2 would be the larger of the two numbers hence num2 would be stored in the variable larger after the evaluation phase our next thing to do is to display our findings so here we have the keyword print followed by the descriptive text the larger number is followed by the variable which is used to store the larger number and the last section needed for the solution is the keyword stop again there are two ways in which this problem could have been solved here is the second method in our second method we begin with the keyword start followed by the declaration of two variables num1 and num2 variables are initialized using the starting value zero this is followed by our prompt and input statement so we're asking the user to enter two unequal values and we read num1 read num2 and then we have our evaluation phase shows everything being performed in our if statement so again the condition is being evaluated num1 greater than num2 if this condition is true then we have the keyword print followed by the variable num1 then the text is larger now this is a different approach to what we have been using before in relation to displaying or printing items if the condition is false and the variable num2 is displayed followed by the term is larger and the end if is used to terminate the if this is followed by the keyword stop you will notice that this solution is somewhat shorter than the first but it's still achieving the same outcome we have an example that shows two potential values being entered and the respective output that will be produced so here we have the numbers 54 and 89 being entered 54 will be stored in num1 89 will be stored in num2 so the output displayed from the pseudocode would be 89 is larger now this is based on the condition evaluated and the format of our output that is within the if statement yep good to go in our next video we will be looking at the concept of iteration and repetitive construct as well as generating pseudocode using pre-condition loops thank you for being a part of another one remember to like comment and subscribe until next time take care